Am I wrong for being rude about giving up a plane seat for a baby? My best friend and I spent a month backpacking around Europe. By the time we were going to head home, we were exhausted. To make our flight, we took a 4 a.m. shuttle to the airport and could barely think or keep our eyes open. We had pretty crap seats on our first flight. They are right up against a wall or cubby at the end of the plane and not only didn't recline backwards, but pushed forward a little while the people in front fully reclined into us. Needless to say, we didn't sleep, but it was a quick flight, quick layover, and we were praying for decent enough seats to get a good sleep on our final flight home, which was six and a half hours. We are in a three-person row, but the aisle seat remains empty as the plane gets closer to finish boarding. We are so excited at this point thinking we can stretch out and share the spare seat. Boarding is finished, the seat is still empty, and we were so excited to finally get some sleep. After boarding, a woman from a few rows down says she noticed the empty seat and asks if she can switch us. We are a bit confused. Then explains that she would ask her seat neighbor to fill our empty seat so that she can have a full seat for her baby. We were visibly disappointed. I was super nauseous at this point and just wanted to sleep for a bit. We asked if we can switch seats for a couple of hours because we've been traveling for a long time and we are really wrung out. She said okay. Shortly after we were served a snack, the woman couldn't really manage her baby and asked a flight attendant to hold it so that she could eat. A couple of minutes after this, she came over and said that's it. The man is coming to fill the empty seat. We have to move back to our assigned seats and let her have an extra for her baby. I gave her a rude look and looked away and didn't say a word more. She put her baby seat on the seat next to her, now empty, and that was that. The baby was loud, always whining and crying, but that's nothing you can blame a baby for. She then gave the baby a rattle toy, which was constantly being shaken and really loud, on top of the whining and crying. The mom also shook the rattle toy for the baby to try to get it to quiet down. Didn't work. Making additional noise. This wasn't once or twice, but throughout most of the flight, including lights and windows off slash sleeping time. After we got off the plane, I complained to my friend and she said I was being an asshole for acting so irritated by this woman when she was struggling with the baby. She said I should have been kinder but that she didn't bring it up or bug me about it because of the irritability of needing sleep and feeling shitty. I'd like to get some outside opinions on whether we should just have offered the seat and whether I'm an asshole for being grumpy about the whole thing. And to clarify, the seat swap didn't happen mid-flight. She charged over after 45 minutes or less and said we had to give up the seat now. I feel like this is going to sound mean, but being friends with an insecure girl can be one of the worst experiences. Specifically, insecure girls who really crave male attention. The issue is, they will always be in a competition with you. It doesn't matter like how pretty they are, how much they have, they will always want to tear you down and take from you. I dealt with this one girl who I thought was a really close friend. We were friends for like four years, I think. And at first it wasn't very noticeable because I literally looked up to her. I was like, wow, she's so pretty and she has everything. Everybody likes her. She's smart. And it wasn't until years later after I finally cut her off that I realized how toxic she was. So we usually hung out in a group of three. And the first red flag was whenever the other girl had a crush and she expressed it, this girl would immediately start pursuing that guy, even though she had no connection to him prior. The other friend only ever had crushes on guys that she was already friends with. But this other girl had no connection to him until her friend was interested in him and then all of a sudden she's messaging him she actually ended up dating three of those guys that my friend had a crush on the other friend just was like okay whatever i think the other friend valued the friendship more than a guy so she wasn't like willing to let a guy get in between their relationship anyway i never really expressed interest in dating to her because i mean look at the way she acts also wasn't really interested in dating at the time like it was just not a priority for me one day she asked me about this and i said i haven't really felt the need to date and after that she went around speculating about my sexuality I remember there was this one guy who she thought was really cute and one day he told her he thought I was cute. I was not interested in this guy at all. This actually really upset her and she came to me and said like, I think it's so funny that he thinks you're cute. That made me feel really bad about myself because I was like, oh, she thinks I'm ugly. She thinks that it's funny that somebody would find me cute. And that's where you can really see our perceptions were different because while she valued so much how men perceived her, I really valued her opinion. So her telling me that affected me more than him saying that I was cute. She would always be trying to compete with me. This goes for everything, like even career path, like classes I was taking, like no matter what, she was always in a competition with me. And it was so exhausting. It's like she was always trying to prove to herself that she was better than me, prettier than me. Looking back, I do wonder why I stayed friends with her for so long. There's really only so much you can take from a friendship. And she's one of those dangerous types of friends who tears apart your confidence. And that's why I've sworn off being friends with insecure girls who care too much about what men think of. I got one. There's not really a gentle way to put this story. I just kind of have to give it to you. So I would just like to start with content warning, okay? I'm a survivor of childhood SA. I'm extremely privileged in every aspect of my life, even in my trauma. 
I have two parents who give huge fucks about me, who believed me immediately, and the relief effort, bitch, they damn near called in FEMA. They were like, they sounded all the alarms. So I was immediately taken to the doctor so I could be tested for literally everything, okay? I was a child, so it was a pediatrician. The doctor, bro, he's just over here trying to relate to the kids. He's not expecting some child to come in with extraordinarily adult-like issues. Like, you know, big old shit like that. He's used to seeing fucking Jacob in his runny nose. You know what I mean. Not seeing Kate for her AIDS testing. Like, crazy shit. So, again, pediatrician. He's just over here trying to relate to the kids. Babes, he healies up to me. He healies up. And is like, What are we in for today, bro? How can I help? Good to see you. And I was like, So then I guess, you know, I remember that part. And then, um, I guess, like, you know, they did all the testing and shit. And at that point, he realized, like, it's not time to relate to the youth. Um, in fact, the youth are having very, the youth, me, having an extraordinarily adult situation right now. So, like, he did understand that healing in that moment was, like, not really appropriate. So, like, then when we, you know, he healed up to me on, on impact, he healed up. And then, you know during the thing when he like realized what was really going on he was like you know this isn't a time or place for me to healy so but you know like taking the wheels out and then putting in that rubber stopper like that's a lot of work so he like didn't have time for all that i don't know where his his wheels might have been you know what i mean in his stethoscope bag or some shit so while he's like walking me down to make sure that i'm not like pregnant at 14 years old or whatever the fuck he's glidesdale horsing me down and is like i'm so sorry about what happened and I was like, yeah, me too, dog. But at that point, it's like, bitch, just pick me up and let's skate on down and figure out these results together. You know what I mean? Let's start with the drama. I really do want to give grace to all the women involved. Being in an environment like this, it heightens everything. Your emotions, everything is just, it's just overwhelming. And so it does get the, the best of us at times. And it did get the best of me. And I think you guys got to see that on Tuesday's episode. Um, it was kind of my breaking point. So I just want to say I'm not innocent in this. You know, I think I like to say that I am a woman that, you know, speaks her mind and will defend herself at all costs. That's just how I was raised. Um, but yeah, if I can go back, honestly, I would do things differently especially when whatever you're going to say or do is just not going to make the other person happy. Um, so next time I'm just going to zip it. I was first told I was going to be on The Bachelor. The last thing I thought was I'm going to be in drama. Um, I didn't go into that house looking for trouble. I really didn't. I wanted to make friends, make memories, and then make a love connection. <laughs> That's literally it. I think that what people fail to realize is that we're all watching at the same time. So a lot of things that I'm hearing and I'm seeing that people are saying and doing, I'm hearing it for the first time and I'm seeing it for the first time. So uh, it is tricky. It was hard to navigate in the house and in that environment, let alone having to watch it back and kind of go through the motions. So just please spread positivity like nobody's perfect, including myself. Um, and I just think that you know, should happen sometimes um, and people deal with things differently. I can't understand or explain or um, defend everyone's actions and doings in the house, but you know, I'm responsible for myself and I think that I could have done things better. So I'll leave it at that. But also when I did say that things will be coming to light and will be spoken about, I stand by that. And, um, you know, being filmed 24 seven, I knew that that would come in handy at some point. Um, but I digress. So I'm going to be going into something a little bit more sensitive now. So if you guys don't want to hear it or don't want to see it, just end the video now. Um, you guys got to see me share a story about my mom, but, uh, the reason why I brought that up was because I told Joey in an earlier conversation that wasn't shown, um, why I might be a little bit more... Um, you know, straightforward and just blunt, I guess, is the word. But um, I'm a little rough around the edges. I know that's not probably the best thing to say in the Bachelor world, but I mean it. It is because I was raised by my dad and my brothers, and I'm just, yeah, I'm just a little bit more tough. Oh, my dad and my mom were separated, and to me, growing up, I just... I didn't know what to think of it. I, I held resentment. Um, I couldn't understand it, uh, and I just... 
I didn't have my mom around and that was kind of the, that was kind of it. Um, but after watching the episode, uh, she shared with me a few things and showed me the magazine that we were in. And so I want to show you guys, but it's a little bit, if you're squeamish, is that the word? Um, yeah, maybe look away, but, um, that's my mom's car and that's the truck that fell on us. That is them trying to get my mom and I out of the car. They, um, we're using bricks. It took my mom like a couple hours for her to get out of the car. And so, you know, when the officers came to the scene after seeing that literally it says mom and baby cheat death and car squashed like a pancake. Um, and that's us, you know, looking at these things, I, I, I just always said, I'm like, that's a miracle. It's something that happened. And I thank God every day that I'm okay. And things are the way that they are. And going through something so tragic like that, I, I can only imagine what my mom went through at the time. I didn't understand it. She had to go to rehab to learn how to properly walk again, but it could have been worse. Like when they thought she broke every bone in her body, cause I mean, knock on wood, look at, look at that. Um, it just wasn't the case and I'm here still standing. So it's not something I normally share. It's not something that I, you know, even like to talk about, but, um, I am happy that I did share it because, um, it kind of gives background as to why my mom kind of did the things that she did. And also, you know, kind of me going through something that I went to through recently, which I didn't get to really expand on, uh, in that conversation. In 2018, I got into a really, really bad car accident myself and, it brought me to a really dark place. And um, yeah, like now looking back, I can talk about it because when I was in the moment, I didn't want to see my friends. I didn't want to see my family. I felt ugly. I felt just, I don't know. I didn't see like what the meaning of life was anymore. I was just, it was just a hard time for me. It was not a good place to be in, a good headspace to be in. It was terrible. And I'm so grateful. I have the most amazing friends and family that helped me get out of that. Um, I couldn't push them away for too long. So, you know, they, they made it a thing to, to help me get out of that. And I'm really glad that they did. So that's why I choose to just be as positive as I can every day and just be grateful for another day on earth honestly, because you just don't know, um, what life can throw at you. You just don't know things can change in an instant. And that's kind of how I connected it to Joey was kind of going through something myself. I was able to reconnect with my mom and forgive her and understand kind of where she was at. And that's kind of why I brought that up to kind of put it all together. Not sweat the small stuff. I don't like to complain about a lot of things. I like to just be grateful for every um, opportunity I get, everyone that I have in my life. I I love so much and don't know where I would be without them. So um, yeah, it, innately you should always be nice to everyone you meet, to everyone around you. But respect is earned. And you know, I don't like to put myself in situations where I feel like I need to be on the attack. I don't like to put myself in situations where I'm dealing with petty fights. I really don't because there are things in far worse that are going on in people's lives. And I just felt so lucky to be there. Guys, I was on a yacht. You think I want to sit there and be sad? No, I, I'm i so grateful for everything that's going on. I'm grateful for everyone that's so supportive of me. And yeah, I'm just... I'm just trying to focus on the positive and not the negative. And I thought that's what I was trying to like make clear to everyone. But um, yeah, so if you could take anything from this video right now, turn to someone. If you're watching this with someone, if not, then the next person you see, your family, your friend, give them the biggest hug because you, you just, you just, you just got to choose to be happy. Just choose to be happy. Does that make sense? We could all try. Today on their way out the door for recess, one of my students went to the refrigerator in the back of our classroom and brought me my lunch bag and said, Miss Fine, here is your lunch. Don't forget, you have to eat your lunch during recess today. And I said, I'm so sorry. I must have forgotten because I have no idea what you're talking about. And that child kind of laughed and said, Miss Fine, you have a meeting during your lunch today. Remember? And I was like, no, I do not remember. I have no idea what you're talking about. And that child kind of rolled their eyes. and was like, Miss Fine, stop being funny. And I was like, I swear to you, I am not being funny. I have literally no idea what you're talking about so this child gave the most exasperated adult sign and was like oh, remember the phone call i'm like what phone call we've had an assembly this morning then special we barely have been in the room i don't know what you're talking about 
And this child said, no, not today. On February 8th, remember your phone call? And it took me a minute, but I did. Because February 8th, one month ago, I received a phone call during morning meeting um, of our school secretary telling me that I was going to have a meeting during lunch that day. And did I know? And I was like, nope, don't have a Google Calendar invite, don't have it in my notes. I had no nothing about this meeting. And they said, you're going to have this meeting during lunch. Figure it out. I said, okay. Then, maybe 15 minutes later, our secretary called us back during math and was like, just kidding. Forget everything I said. You do have a meeting during lunch, but it's on March 8th, not February 8th. And I said, okay, great. Of course, if you're a teacher, you know that any phone call you take, you are taking with an audience of, in my case, 23 children who are listening better than they ever do in your teaching. And so when the, I hung up the second time, the kids were like, what was that about? And I said, well, I was supposed to have a meeting during lunch today, but apparently it's not for another month. So March 8th, I'm going to have a meeting during lunch. And that child remembered that moment, remembered that phone call, and kept it locked in their little brain for a month from February 8th until March 8th, just so they could remind me on March 8th that I had a meeting, which still never got a Google Calendar invite, and which, of course, I did forget. And because I did not remember I had a meeting, I had stuff to do during a recess time because I didn't have duty today. So I had the copies to make and emails to send and like other things to do. So I didn't have my lunch then. And I didn't have my lunch because I had a meeting during that time. I looked at that child after remembering this whole thing and was like, you're here to tell me that you remembered the time and date of a meeting I had from a phone call that was one month ago, but you can't remember how to spell animal or favorite or really or what six minus three is. And they just laughed. And ran out the door. This just proves to me what I have always known, which is that if they wanted to, they would. And also that I might be paying for a personal assistant that I didn't know I had. Get rid of me while I tell you guys how I literally almost got kidnapped last night. No, it's actually not funny, but let me tell you bitches exactly what the fuck happened. Last night, I was supposed to go out with my amigas. And we were all gonna meet here first, and then we were all gonna leave to the party, like, all together. Oh, fuck, that was a lot. But those little putas were taking way too damn long to get ready, so I just ended up, like, leaving alone, and I told them that I will just meet them there at the fucking party. It's already late, though, bitch. It's already, like, 12 already at this point, bitch. I'm, like, fucking late, of course. So whatever, I get my Uber, and I get a notification saying my Uber is here, and I'm literally still in my fucking, like, beauty room douching and shit. So I had texted the Uber, like, oh, I'm going down, I'm gonna be a while. And by a while, it was only like four minutes by the time I got down there. If you've been to my apartment, you know that my shit is like a fucking maze. So like, it takes a while to get from here to there. So by the time I got outside, it's already been like five fucking minutes since the Uber's been out there. Keep that shit in mind for what's to come next. So I get outside, it's dark out, there's nobody around. Oh, yo, bitch, it's like fucking 12.30 a.m. And when I get out there, oh, also, I noticed that the Uber... Why are you texting me? I noticed that the Uber driver was a girl. And that's not really weird. If anything, like, you should feel more comfortable that it's a girl. But to me, it was a little weird because I've never had a girl Uber driver. Like, I don't know. Every time I get into an Uber car, whatever, or an Uber driver, an Uber driver, it's always a guy. So the fact that it was a girl, it threw me off just a little bit. Like, I was like, oh, okay, like, a girl, yeah. And I'm saying that because I just saw this girl talking about, like, how she almost got, like, a little kidnapping little shit, too. And how she was saying a, a woman approached her. Not a guy, a woman, like it was like a trap. So anyways, I get outside and I see that the car is parked hella far. Like I had to walk far to get to the car, to the Uber. And I didn't really think much of it because I mean, it's happened before. Like sometimes the Uber is just fucking parked far as fuck. That's just another thing to keep in mind though. I had to walk a cute minute to get to the Uber. Also, I'm so fucking pale right now that I use my tan shade of the summer. Like this was my fucking shade that I was using at Coachella. Like that's how tan I was as my contour. <laughs> But anyway, so I'm walking to the fucking Uber, right? And as I'm approaching the Uber, I see somebody in the back of the car. And that's whenever I'm like, this shit's fucking weird. Why are you still in the... Why is there somebody in my Uber? So for a second, I was like, oh, maybe this isn't my Uber. But as I'm like going up to the door, I'm like waiting outside because I see somebody like in the car and it's a guy. And the guy comes out. And the woman that was driving that was speaking, she was probably like in her like mid 30s. No, mid 40s. And the guy that came out was like in his mid 30s. Weird, creepy-ass guy, dude. Whenever he got out the Uber, he was just staring at me down. But also, I didn't really think much of that because I always get stared at by vatos. But as he's leaving the Uber, the girl's like, bye, like, have a good night, da, da, da. But she was, like, foreign. Like, her English wasn't, like, 100%. Like, it was, like, a little ratata, you know? I am gonna be a little mean right now. I don't give a fuck, but I just need you guys to, like, get the whole picture. This woman, she was a little uncanny valley. Like, she was, like, she was old, and it was just, it was just so weird. Like, I don't know, like, the whole thing was weird. So she's telling the guy goodbye, and as the guy's, like, leaving and getting up, I'm just like, why are you still in the Uber? Like, it's been, you guys have been here for five minutes, and you're telling me you're still in the Uber? So then the girl's like, hi, and then 
I'm like, hold on one second. I tell her, cause like, I don't know what to do. So I'm just like there on my phone trying to figure out like something to do. Like I'm just like trying to figure out the situation, like trying to process the situation. So I just tell the girl, um, one second, that's it. And then she like gets quiet. I'm like right there on my phone. This is the car. I'm like in the back right here. She's obviously the driver in the front and I'm like standing outside. And the guy walked around me and he's just right here in the back of the car. And he's just on his phone. And I'm just like this on my phone. And I'm like, I'm not getting in that car until that guy leaves. Like, what is he doing standing there? Of course, he could just be like, you know, waiting for his friend or something, da da da. But I feel like this day and age, like you're on the phone or you know where the fuck you're going. Or I don't know, it was just so weird that he was standing there for so long. So I'm just there waiting for him to leave. And the guy goes like this, this is the guy. And then he starts walking. Ooh, bitch, it's just so weird. Like, why do you have to look at me before you walk? Like, just walk, just go to the place that you're going to. So that guy then starts walking and he starts walking towards like this like townhouse that was like right there. And I say townhouse because again, I'm trying to get like, I need y'all to get the picture. He's walking towards this townhouse and the townhouse is kind of like far in and there's like a little entry arc and then there's like bushes. So I just, I before I got into that fucking car, I wanted to wait until I like saw that guy leave or go into his fucking house. So I'm there waiting. And as I'm waiting, the girl goes, are you waiting for a friend? And I just go, um, hold on. I literally just say, hold on. Like, I don't know what to say. Like, let's say I said yes. And then we're just there waiting longer for a friend. Or let's say I said no. And that guy fucking turns around and like starts fucking attacking me. You know what I mean? So I just didn't know what the fuck to say. So I was just like, hold on. I just said, hold on, bitch. I'm there on my phone like this. Just like watching the guy. The guy then disappears. You know how I said there was bushes out there? He went through the arc. But like, how do, how do I explain it, dude? Like he was walking so slow. Like he wasn't... It, like, you could tell that he didn't know where the fuck he was going. Like, he was walking slow as fuck. Whatever. He disappeared behind the arc. He went in to, like, the, towards the townhouse. So then I was like, okay, I can now get in the car. So I get into the Uber, and the girl's just like, ha, 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 like, how funny that um, you get here as soon as, like, he's leaving, da, 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 da. Like, I'm like, ha. Huh. Now, I don't know if you bitches have ever been in an Uber before. I'm sure you fucking have. But when you get in an Uber, you get in, you close the door, you put your seatbelt on, they leave. Sometimes they fucking leave before you even get to put your seatbelt on. Bitch, I got in, I put my seatbelt on, I closed the door, and I'm on my phone, and I'm just waiting for her to go. And she's not going. She then goes, are you waiting for a friend? And I'm just like, no. And then after she asked me that, like, are you waiting for a friend? And I said, no, it's silent for like six seconds. I then look at her, bitch. She's looking out the window for the guy. That, oh, fuck no. That's whenever my heart dropped. Not all the way down because I'm not a fucking pussy, but it dropped like half ways. And I was just like, uh-uh. Why are you looking for the guy? Like, bitch, ooh, that's just like weird as fuck. And you know what? That wasn't even my last straw. There was two straws left and she pulled them both at the same time because right after I saw her looking for the guy, I was looking at her and she turns around and she goes, it's kind of cold outside, right? I'm like, bitch, uh-uh. Like, sh move. Like, the why aren't the wheels moving? So that's whenever everything clicked and I was like, uh-uh. Ooh, bitch, that scared me. <gasps> it's my cat's like auto food dispenser. I thought that bitch came back for revenge. So whenever she asked me that, trying to basically spark up another conversation, I was just like, no. So then she asked me that and I was like, uh, hold on. And bitch, I was so scared to open the door because I was like, if I try opening this door and this door is locked, like she's trying to lock me in, bitch, I'm throwing hands. Like I'm about to have to, like I'm fully about to have to fight this bitch and like unlock the door and get my ass out of here. Thank God it wasn't though. I like, I, this is literally me. Like I'm just like this, like, Hold on. And then I like, I open the door and I just get out. And like I said, she parked far. So it's a far walk back to my fucking apartment. And as I was walking back, I pull out my phone and I just start recording myself walking back. Like just in fucking case I want to get up on camera. Duh. And I'm just like looking back, have all my fucking guards up. And I'm just making sure that that guy doesn't fucking pop out of nowhere. Or that guy just like doesn't start following me. And bitch, it was just weird. It was weird. And on the walk back, she stayed parked there. And part of me is just thinking, like, how would that work? Like, how did that bitch not think I was going to pull up with, like, two other friends or something? Or am I just a fucking dumbass? And was, like, the whole thing of him, like, leaving at the same time that I got there five minutes after, like, that bitch has been parked there was just, like, a little coincidence? <sighs> like, maybe I'm just hella overthinking it. And maybe she just genuinely thought that I was, like, waiting for a friend and that's why she wasn't moving the car. And maybe that guy was just, like, actually a dumbass and just confused as fuck and where to go. So that's why he was, like, waiting outside for so long. And that's why he was, like, walking hella slow to, like, the fucking place. Y a la mejor, she was just looking out for the guy. And that's why she was just, like, you know, looking out the window and shit for him. But I don't know. Shit's fucking weird. Long story short, stay safe outside. Always be alert. Especially if you're pretty. Glad I didn't get mugged. Yeah. Stay safe. Okay, so here's the story time on how I got my braids done Tuesday night. And they were out by Wednesday morning. 
I'm not trying to bash anybody from this story. I just wanted to let you guys know why my hair got taken out. The hairstylist is a very sweet person. I just won't be going back. And we're gonna be curling my hair. Quick little backstory. I'm from Atlanta, but I don't go to school in Atlanta. I go to school about three hours from Atlanta. So because I don't have a hairstylist here, I just drive home three hours every time I wanna get my hair done. When it comes to wigs and all that stuff, I could do my own, you know? I can braid hair, twist hair, do all that, but I just can't do it on myself. I just don't have that type of patience. So I'm a sophomore in college now, meaning I've been driving home every time I wanna get my hair braided, twisted, or in soft locks, I drive back home, keep that in mind. So this time around, I decided I did not feel like driving all the way back home. And I'm like, maybe it's time for me to find a hairstylist here. So I did what I felt like most people do. And I went on TikTok and just typed in my city and said, hairstylist in blah, blah, blah. So while like scrolling through the TikTok, I found this boy's page. Yes, y'all heard me write a boy. Everybody thinks it was a girl who did it. It was a boy. From what I've seen, his work ate. Like I was like, okay, he do some good bohemian knotless braids. His prices was really good too. Like for the uh, knotless braids, it was $160. So then I go to like his booking website and I'm like, okay, I got to hurry up and book because I wanted it done that weekend, but he was fully booked out. So I was like, okay, I'll do Monday. And my appointment was at 5.30 PM on Monday. I sent my deposit. The deposit was $25. Of course, when I seen that text message, my heart shattered. But honestly, there was not much I could do except say, yeah, I could do tomorrow because I needed my hair done. Plus, the next day, which was Tuesday, I was going to be available. So I was like, yeah, that can work. See, right there should have been my first red flag because it's like, how are you not available but on your booking site you were? But at the end of the day, you never know what people be going through. So I was just like, I could do tomorrow. I'm going to go tomorrow. Fast forward, Tuesday come around, 5.30 come around. I pull up to his house. Come in his house. He's a sweet, sweet person. We was really just chopping it up for the most part. Like, he was telling me how he's, like, in cosmetology school, like, his later plans. Also, keep in mind, while he's doing my hair, he would, like, stop and be like, I just want to let you know, I just ate on these braids. Like, these braids are eating, like, stuff like that. So, of course, I'm getting hyped. I'm like, oh, like, I already have the TikTok sound saved, y'all. I'm just like, oh, this finna eat. So, like I said, I do people's hair as well. So, like, what I noticed was in the back, like, he, he took his time and everything but the moment we got to the front i just felt like out of nowhere we was moving he was really speeding like, i'm like okay well he he probably just you know as a pro at the front like that's none of my business i just know this is gonna eat but keep in mind on the booking site where with the bohemian knotless braids there was no size but from the pictures and videos i seen on tiktok and the instagram page it gave medium all in all it took me about four hours to finish my head which was like pretty good but like once he was done, I'm like, okay, that was really fast. So once he's done, he tells me that he left his mini flat iron in his car and he had to run to his car and get it. So I'm like, okay, that's fine. So usually this is the time I would have took out my phone and checked what I was giving. But I was like, no, I'm not going to look yet. I want to see what it looks like with the edges done, like all that stuff. Because when it comes to my hair, I'm very particular. It's so like, I don't want it to like not like it all because my edge is not done yet. So I was like, let me just wait till he's fully done. Then I'll look. I should have fucking looked. He comes back in does my edges lays my edges he goes and gets this like little mirror and then like turns my chair around and is like bow when i tell y'all my heart dropped like my heart dropped to my fucking ass like i was just like oh keep in mind if you don't know me i'm very blind like these glasses right here very much prescriptive but i didn't have my glasses keep that in mind so when i seen the hair originally it's not that i didn't like it but it was just like I, it was just very empty to me I like my hair to get full and it just wasn't giving full. But again, I'm like, okay, maybe I could like grow to like the, you know, size. Like other than that, the braids look cute, you know? Also, the deposit had to be cash at, but the rest of the balance had to be paid in cash. So I had to pay him $140 in cash. So being that I'm not from here, they don't have my bank here. So like getting that cash alone, I think it was like $140, was already a hassle. I actually took out $150 because I'm like, you know, I got to tip him. So he shows me my hair. My like mood is ruined. But honestly, y'all like in that chair, the hair was like a good seven out of 10 to me. I'm like, I can make it work. I can make it work. I pay him the money, the 150. So he has now been paid $175 from me. Keep that in mind. So I get in my car and I'm like ranting to my phone camera because that's just something I do. I don't know. I'm literally driving in the rain, ranting to my camera. And as I'm talking to my camera, I put my head down. What I saw in that reflection, and I seen those parts, oh my God, I was living. 